Hello folks, my name is Raul Medina, and I'm going to be giving you a persuasive speech over capital punishment today. And my first thing I have to say about capital punishment is it's been around since the early 18th century, influenced by the European and influenced by European ancestors. First recorded execution in Britain can't be punished if you have a mental illness or if you're under 18 in America. Types of punishment. Lethal injection, electrocution, burning alive, drowning, impalement, or jail. Costs of capital punishment. Regular capital punishment is around 900 or 740000 without the death penalty. That's with just going to jail. That's your regular punishment for, say, you murder. Concluding with capital punishment, 1.6, 1.26 million for the death penalty. 90,000 saved on tax dollars from capital punishment. The death penalty helps heal hearts in a way because it, you have that that you know that that person is not going to get out of jail or escape or whatever and come do something to the rest of your family. You already had enough loss, so that's why some people feel the death penalty is somewhat good because they have reassurance that they'll never have to see that person again. And it provides it provides a lot of closure, and you don't have to be worried. Why we have capital punishment? To have law, to have a code to go by, so we're not like Africa to have morals. First capital punishment case was in 1976 with, with the Greg versus Georgia Act. And now I'm going to read something I wrote for this speech. Capital punishment laws date back to the early 18th century BC. The Code of King Hammurabi in of Babylon and still is widely practiced a concept today. Mostly influenced by European ancestors, the British inducted capital punishment into the New World. With the first recorded execution taking place in 1608, while the historic practice of death penalty has been rec revolutionized in terms of application, the controversy capital punishment in the United States began after the 1976 Supreme Court de decision in Gregg v. Georgia, which deemed capital punishment constitutional despite the 18th, 18th Amendment that prohibits excessive bail and fines as well as cruel and unusual, unusual punishment. Three major court cases from the early 2000s transferred the criteria that must be Meant in order to, to for a convicted criminal to be sentenced to capital punishment. No capital punishment could be imposed on mentally ill criminals or under the age of 18. Or if underlying crime did not result in victim's death. The death penalty has also reformed in methods of execution over time. Capital punishment has become less cruel and unusual. Execution is done through lethal injection while under a and it's anesthesia, electrocution, or a firing squad opposed to crucifixion, burning alive, drowning, or impalement. Uh, while the alternative of life in prison seems to be more effective, effective, efficient, capital punishment is more expensive and to execute, and many criminals put to death by lethal injection due to their do you feel their body shut down due to influence amounts of anesthesia, causing them to suffer unconceivable amounts of pain? Cases without a, the death penalty cost seven hundred and forty thousand, while a case while a case concluding the capital punishment costs one point two six million. Retentions continue to argue that capital punishment is more cost efficient. For the average taxpayer, saving them nearly 90000 each time a case concludes with 
life in prison instead of the death penalty over arguments made by retentionists is is incap incapacit um, maintenance of law and order and retribution in compensation meaning supporters believe that the murderers do not serve a life in prison are likely to release and kill it if you serve a life in prison and you get released they're likely to kill again it is a reasonable argument but unlikely criminals convicted of murder will serve a life of custody whether they are sentenced to life in prison or just to serve their time and and release with the strict probation supporters of the death penalty supporters of the death penalty believe capital punishment is what exerts social control of ma maintains law and should and should never be a ca the case Retentionists believe that the government applies the death penalty over all states. Crime laws, crime rates will decrease drastically because potential offenders will be more mindful of their punishment. Retribution is the most common argument of capital punishment and has two different concepts, revenge and closure. Many believe crim criminals should be sentenced to a punishment equal to the crime they committed, saying an eye for an eye. However, capital punishment is a quick uh, quick get off for the criminal. Be though they are being put to the end of their life, their suffering is minimal. Personally, I believe the death penalty is an easy way for the criminal to get out and doesn't allow them to understand and repeat what think about what they did for the rest of their life and why they're in that jail cell for the rest of their life. They're sitting there thinking about the crime they did. And that's why I see the death penalty as kind of an easy way out because they don't have to su suffer and think about what they did or the harm they did to the other person or other family. Claiming the criminal's death will heal a family and friends, I believe this idea dehumanizes criminals and tells the community that an innocent life is more valuable than a guilty life. In conclusion, I personally do not support the death penalty because it it is not who God calls us to be. We are under federal law and second to God's law, and His way is what should we, we should rely on. Under God's law, we are called to be forgiving and comprehensive, allowing Him to, to decide the outcome. Scripture also says, what goes around comes around. Whatever measure you deal out to others will come back to you. And this is a must consider in the pursuit of justice. We must be fair and com compassionate when deciding punishment and consider what we want in their position. Ultimately, God is a judge and decides this in a eternal fate, and in the end, he will know what is fair. We must rely on his will, and in the end, we radiate his love and compassion until the day comes. He, he has a plan for all of us children and decide when our path will come to an end. Thank you for watching my precise speech. I hope you think something a little bit different about capital punishment and the death penalty now. Thank you.